Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Gouman Singh, topping our newscast. In the past six months, the Department of Licensing and Consumer Affairs has received at least four reports of scams preying on residents of the territory. Now, the DLCA is sending out an alert about another attempt by scammers to steal your money. News 2's April Knight has that story. The Department of Licensing and Consumer Affairs warns residents of a new scam currently circulating in the territory. We got a tip from a concerned uh, individual. They're shocking your conscience with the with the claim that you've won or uh, that you're entitled to, to so much money in the millions of dollars. And once they get your attention, then they, they're saying to you that you've got to pay some sort of activation fee or some sort of fee required by the Virgin Islands government. The most disturbing thing about scams like these is how increasingly authentic and very locally specific they've become. Both scam letters bear local addresses and phone numbers. They also look like they came from local government agencies. This one looks like it came from the VI Superior Court, complete with details like stamps and signatures. The other one mimics the VI Tourism logo, from the Mokojumbi to the font, and it's asking for various deposits to unlock more than $7 million in available money. Commissioner Carrington asks residents to report any incident of possible scamming to DLCA so that others may be warned. Be very scrutinous, a very, very scrutinizing of the source. Alert this agency that, so that we, can, we can alert the general public as to the existence of this kind of scam. Scammers can always abandon scams like these once they find out they've been discovered by authorities. The DLCA states that this is why residents must always be vigilant. Someone's on to the latest scam, or well, then they, they go back to the lab and cook up a new one. As a rule, if it's too good to be true, ignore it, disregard it. Reporting for News 2, I'm April Knight. The Virgin Islands Water and Power Authority advises the St. Thomas St. John District that as of 542 Thursday evening, power was restored to all feeders in the district. Feeder 8B was without power early in the day, affecting some 1,900 customers in the process of fixing the problem. Generating Unit 23 fell off the grid and a WAPA employee was injured with non-life-threatening injuries. The University of the Virgin Islands campus was the last entity to get its power restored which happened at 7.35 p.m. on Thursday. The Virgin Islands Labor Commissioner-designee Catherine Hendry is pleased to announce the implementation of the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, which was signed by President Obama on July 22, 2014. She says this new federal legislation is the first major reform to federal job training programs in more than 15 years. It's designed to improve the coordination of employment and training services across federally funded programs and strengthen collaboration collaboration, coordination, and partnerships between and among public agencies, community-based organizations, private sector businesses, and employers. The kickoff will be held in both districts on Wednesday, July 1st at 12 noon, Department of Labor, St. Thomas, and St. Croix. The Senate Rules and Judiciary Committee chaired by Senator Kenneth Gittins met Friday on St. Croix to consider some nominations. Frederick Joseph and Mohamed Mizbeh were being considered for membership on the Public Employees Relations Board. Rashida Mohamed, meanwhile, was being considered as a member of the Virgin Islands Taxi Commission. The committee was also scheduled to consider a bill proposed by Senator Nellie O'Reilly that would direct the Department of Tourism to advertise St. Croix in key areas on St. Thomas and St. John. Other bills that were up for consideration were an act requiring the Agriculture Department to do feasibility studies on the production of moringa trees, aloe vera, and bamboo in the territory an act authorizing the VI government to apply for $105 million in Garvey bonds. Senator Marvin Blyden thanks residents in the Nada area for what he called an incredible turnout for the town hall meeting on the Brookman Road project. The meeting happened Wednesday night. One pertinent question of the evening was whether a two-hour-a-day, two-lane traffic road would be opened. Island Road's project manager, Jeffrey Fleming, indicated that after considering the options, the lesser of the two evils was selected and only one lane will remain open. The senator stated he'll be following up with the contractor for updates on the construction. 
If you know something, say something to help solve a crime. That's the reminder from Crime Stoppers. You may also earn a reward in the process. Here's this week's Crime Stoppers report. Remember, even the smallest bit of information may be just what law enforcement needs to solve the following cases. The first one, a cold case on St. Croix. Police need help with this one on Friday, April 9, 1999. 24-year-old Juan Juanito Cruz was playing pool at the Milagrosa Bar in downtown Christiansted around 11 p.m. and was struck in the face by, by a pool cue. Cruz went to a, into a coma and died the next afternoon. Police say if you have any information on who struck him, please call Crime Stoppers. Looking on St. John on Monday, January 5th, 2009, Wong Ayala, the owner of Cap's Place in Cruz Bay, was found dead at his home in a state pastry. He had been shot multiple times. If you have inf any information on this cold case, please call Crime Stoppers. Now over in St. Thomas on June 19th at approximately 6 a.m., patrol units were called to Savan Grocery because of an attempted robbery and shooting. The victim stated that two black males wearing masks entered the store and demanded money. He refused to give them money, so one of the males shot him two times. The victim was transported to the Roy Lesnar Schneider Hospital, where he was rushed into surgery. Remember, call 1-800-222-TIPS, because if your tips lead to an arrest or the recovery of stolen property, you will receive a cash reward to be paid according to your instructions. On Thursday, June 25th at 1.15 p.m., the 911 emergency call center received notification of a foul odor emanating from the area of Prince and King Cross Streets in Frederickstead. Officers responded and saw that a building had collapsed several days prior. Individuals familiar with the neighborhood told officers that a homeless man had been squatting in the derelict structure. The Department of Public Works were called in to clear away the debris with heavy equipment. As the debris was cleared away, a man's body became visible and was recovered. The body of the deceased was later identified as 56-year-old Denley Joseph, also known as Suto. No foul play was apparent in this death, according to the VIPD. Police say on Wednesday, June 24th, at roughly 6.42 p.m., police on St. Croix responded to a call of shots having been fired on Central Line Road or the Queen Mary Highway in the vicinity of estates St. George and Diamond. Arriving to the scene, officers discovered a white-colored Honda Civic with a bullet hole in the passenger side window, which had struck a tree and came to a halt west of Bellows International. With the driver unresponsive, emergency medical technicians arrived to the location and found no vital signs in the victim, who was later identified as Dave Edwards Jr. of Estate Wim. Dwayne Foy, 26, of 26 years of age, made his initial appearance in district court before U.S. Magistrate Judge Ruth Miller after his arrest for possession of a firearm by a convicted felon and possession of an unlicensed firearm. Foy was arrested after posting a $50,000 property bond. On June 4, 2015, a federal grand jury returned a three-count indictment against Foy, charging him with two counts of possession of a firearm by a convicted felon and one count of possession of an unlicensed firearm. According to the indictment, Foy was found in possession of the firearm after he was convicted in Superior Court of Reckless Endangerment if convicted of possession of firearm by a convicted felon under federal law. Foy receives, will face maximum sentence of 10 years in prison and $250,000 fine. Foy faces a maximum sentence of five years in prison and $15,000 fine as well. Well, following Thursday's announcement of the U.S. Supreme Court's decision to uphold the provision allowing the federal government through the Affordable Care Act to subsidize health insurance costs for low-income and middle-class individuals, Congresswoman Stacey Plaskett draws attention to the 4 million citizens and nationals living in America's island territories that remain ineligible to participate in a federal exchange and are unable to establish their own state exchange. Plaskett points out that nearly a quarter of the general Virgin Islands population lacks health insurance and that the VI exclusion from ACA is just another example of benign neglect. Turn our attention overseas. Same-sex marriage is now the law of the land. The Supreme Court weighed in on the issue on Friday, and the 5-4 to four decision fell along conservative liberal lines, with Justice Anthony Kennedy given the swing vote. 
Also in other news, President Barack Obama broke into song while delivering a passionate eulogy for State Senator and Pastor Reverend Clementa Pinckney in Charleston, South Carolina. Pinckney was one of nine killed in the shooting attack on a historic African-American church. The president praised Pinckney for living a life of both faith and public service. Keeping our eye on the economy, here's the New York Stock Exchange with our Stock Market Watch. As we can see, the Dow up 56, NASDAQ and S&P down. Coming up on News 2, we have much more straight ahead. Some important information about sleep. We'll be right back. Well, the St. Croix Chamber of Commerce welcomed another new business to its ranks Thursday. With its second ribbon cutting of the week, the Shoe Bar, located on Company Street in Christiansted, hosted a get-together that featured food, beverages, and footwear. For owner Joanne Barry Edney, this is a dream come true. This has been a dream for years. Then after kicks closed, and I realized St. Croix really needed a shoe store for both men and women, and I found this spot, perfect spot, and proceeded to um, make my vision a reality. And so I know that the chamber does a lot of stuff for businesses around, and they have helped me greatly in opening today in as far as getting the word out. So I'm very thankful to Chamber of Commerce today. Well, I love city. Lots of festival action coming this weekend on St. John. Here's what the lineup will look like. On Saturday, it's the Children's Village opening. That begins at 6 p.m. at the VI National Park. The Village opening also kicks off that day, 7 p.m. at the Cruise Bay parking lot. That night's nice entertainment will be Spectrum Band and Kest the Band. The following day, Sunday, entertainment at the Village will be by Big Daddy Shaw and the Jammers, Pompa and Killa. Turn our attention to your health. Most of us know that getting a good night's sleep is important, but too few of us actually make those eight or so hours between the sheets a priority. Here's why you should wake up to the reality of the benefits. Most of us know that getting a good night's sleep is important, but too few of us actually make those eight or so hours between the sheets a priority. It's uh, very important that we all get a good night's sleep. Doctors urge you not to hit the snooze on this concern. Are you aware of what being really, truly rested feels like? It's, it's not just sleeping straight through, but it's making sure that we're not waking up during the sleep and we're not having any irregular breathing problems or issues with the brainwave activity that gets us from one stage of sleep into the deeper stages of sleep. A lot of repair done to the body for the damage that's done during the day occurs in the deeper stages of sleep. Sleep needs vary across ages and are especially impacted by lifestyle and health. For kids, obviously they need to get more sleep. Uh, little kids can need uh, 12 to 15 hours of sleep each day. Uh, but uh, when you get closer to uh, teenage years, they still need 9 to 10 hours. And adults need anywhere between seven and eight and a half hours of sleep. Now that's assuming that they get good quality sleep. The problem that we're seeing very frequently is that the quality of our sleep is not so good. So eight hours of poor quality sleep may be the equivalent of three or four hours of good quality sleep. So we want to make sure that people are, are sleeping well and getting the best benefit from their time sleeping. What sound sleep advice has the doctor ordered? Try to go to bed at a, at a reasonable time, a regular time each night. Don't get preoccupied by watching late night TV shows and, and staying on the computer and texting and things like that that can keep you up and rob you of uh, important hours of sleep. Uh, and uh, try to use the bedroom for sleep. Try to, you know, if you, if you want to watch TV, if you want to do any other activities, do that outside the bedroom and, and try to use the bedroom as a sanctuary to help you sleep. Good advice. Now here's an interesting study. Sleep experts say your favorite sleep position reveals your personality. Curling up in the fetal position means you're shy and sensitive. Flat on your back with arms at your sides means you're quiet and reserved. People who sleep on their side with legs outstretched and arms at sides are relaxed and social. And sleeping on your stomach, they say, with your hands on the sides of your head are outgoing.
Well, speaking of outgoing, you may find your pet right there. The staff at the Humane Society of St. Thomas is extremely worried about 25 at-risk dogs, and they're asking the community for help. News News April Night has more. The clock is ticking for 25 Humane Society dogs. The Animal Shelter's 30 Dogs in 30 Days Challenge is not doing so well, and 25 dogs are in danger of being put down by July 1st. This is for our dogs that have been with us more than six months. As much as we'd like to keep them, six months is entirely too long for a dog to stay in a shelter environment. The summer heat is the problem. 12 dogs that are ready to be shipped to the States that we cannot get off island because the temperature has been 86 and up. American Airlines Cargo here and in San Juan have been so helpful. They monitor the temperatures every morning, but if you're on the runway for two hours and it's 86 degrees, that's kind of hard on the animal. And Humane Society is getting desperate. In addition to pleas for adoptions and fosters, they're even reaching out to those with private planes to help transport the animals to the mainland. And if these dogs don't find a home, Humane Society will have to commit the unthinkable. Nobody gets used, used to euthanasia. It's really a hard hard, hard decision to make. Reporting for News 2, I'm April Knight. We'll be sure to call the Humane Society for more information. Stick around. Your News 2 AccuWeather forecast is coming up next.